Hey, this is Heather. Wanted to share today seven simple things you can do to try to keep your colon healthy. So this is relevant for more minor things like constipation, diarrhea, bloating, gas, those kinds of, they might not seem minor, but you know, day to day intestinal issues. Also relevant for more major issues like IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, uh, Crohn's disease, diverticulitis, even colon cancer. So number one on the list, always for your colon is fiber. We need to make sure we're getting enough we need to make sure we're getting the right mix of soluble and insoluble fiber. Now you don't need to do anything really um, difficult in order to get that. You just need to get a variety of different foods that have those different types of fiber in them. So getting a variety of fruits, vegetables, legumes, beans, whole grains, nuts, seeds, especially flax seeds. You'll be making sure that you're getting a good uh, mix of different types of fibers. Women should aim for about 25 grams of fiber per day at least. Men should aim for 32 grams at least. And I've read stuff about what the average intake is and it's somewhere in the range of 13 to 15 grams per day. So many, many people need to boost their fiber intake. Very simple way to do it. Just start eating more plant-based foods. All of the recipes that I have on my website and in my meal plans and in my cleanses have tons and tons of plant-based fiber, both soluble and insoluble. Just one note for those with IBS, I'm sure you are aware that getting raw vegetables is very irritating to the walls of your colon, which are uh, sensitive. So better for you to cook your vegetables you can steam them, you can boil them, you can bake them, starts to break down that fiber. So you're still getting the fiber, but it's not as rough on your intestinal walls. And same goes for everyone else. If you find discomfort in your colon, if you're eating too much fiber, try lightly cooking your vegetables and definitely well cooking your beans, legumes, and whole grains to make sure that those digest properly. Calcium and vitamin D are very important to reduce the risk of colon cancer. So I'm out in the sunshine right now getting some vitamin D. I also take supplements. You can get calcium from lots of various plant foods, especially dark green leafy vegetables, beans and legumes, nuts and seeds. And you can take a small amount of supplements to make sure you get up to the daily recommended intake of 1200 milligrams per day. Water, it's important to make sure that the colon walls are properly hydrated, otherwise they won't function properly. You'll get stuff stuck there, it has longer to sit and let toxins into your bloodstream. So hydrate, the standard recommendation, eight cups, two liters per day. If you are eating lots of fruits and vegetables and well-cooked whole grains and beans, like I do, like I put in my meal plans and my cleanses, you will be getting probably about 500 milliliters of water from your food. So you need to aim for one and a half liters. So somewhere in the range of one and a half to two liters per day, you wanna be making sure that you get that from water, maybe some from juice, uh, pure fruit juice, and try to minimize the sugars. I usually recommend uh, diluting juice in water so that you hydrate without too much additional sugar. Um, and tea and coffee count towards your water intake. I know most people say that they're a diuretic. I know I've said that in the past, but studies have shown that the contribution of water to your body is more than the effect of the diuretic. So make sure you get enough liquid from the fluids that you're drinking as well as the fluids in your food. Regular exercise and activity, super important. The walls of your colon are made up of muscles. That's what moves things through. Uh, so you wanna make sure that those are healthy. So exercise generally increases the blood flow and circulation through your whole body, gets oxygen to all of the cells that need it, including the cells of your colon wall. Also, just moving around helps to move things through your colon. Not exactly when you're moving, because when you are exercising, your body shuts down your digestive organs, but afterwards, you'll probably find that things move more regularly. So when I exercise every day, my bowel movements are regular. Uh, and I find that um, getting out and running and being active helps any gas in my system move through properly. Plus you're outside usually when you're exercising, so it's a good way to let off the steam. 
Limiting red meat and processed meats is on pretty much all lists for maintaining a healthy colon because apparently studies show that your risk of colon cancer increases by 15 to 20 percent if you have 100 grams of red meat, which is one small hamburger, or 50 grams of processed meat, which is one hot dog, per day. So try to reduce that. Obviously, from my perspective, I would love if you eliminated that um, for more reasons than just colon cancer, obviously. Uh, but uh, there's, there's yet another reason to minimize or eliminate those foods. Smoking also greatly increases the chances of developing colon cancer. So among its other downsides, there is yet another reason to attempt to give up smoking. I have a friend who had very good success giving up smoking through hypnosis. So there's an idea uh, for those who may be stuck in that. An occasional colon cleanse can be really, really helpful to uh, assist in keeping your colon healthy and functioning properly. Now, I am not an advocate for anything extreme. My kind of cleanse involves bringing in lots of wonderful, healthful foods that are rich in fiber and making sure that you're properly hydrated, getting some light exercise, and just avoiding those things that might leave toxins in our body for three to seven days. Doesn't have to be long. Just do that, you know, two, three, maybe four times per year. Now, I've touched on colon cancer a few times here, and I mention it because it's something that's top of mind for me. I have a very high risk of developing colon cancer in my life because I have, I think, four or five family members that have had colon cancer from both my mom's side and my dad's side, direct relatives. So that is a huge risk factor for cancer. And I see a lot of information out there about anti-cancer diets, about preventing and reversing certain diseases. And I like the message to a point because there are some things that we can do to control our risk factors. So those things that I mentioned, eating a lot of fiber, making sure that I'm hydrated properly, getting regular exercise. Those things are my way of giving my body the best chance it can. But I also think it's really important to recognize that none of us has total control. And if I develop cancer, which as I said, I am highly likely to get colon cancer. So if I get cancer, I'm not gonna say to myself, wow, that sucks, I wish I had done things better. I'm not gonna blame myself, because that's ridiculous. What I'm gonna say to myself is, wow, I'm really glad that I did everything in my power to give myself the best chance possible, to give my body the best health possible in order to have a chance to fight this. And depending on the circumstances, we may not always have a chance to fight it. I think it's really important to not blame ourselves, particularly not to blame others. I've seen some really disgusting comments out there of people talking to one another when, when someone has been diagnosed with cancer and telling them that maybe they didn't do veganism good enough. That is totally not acceptable to say. Anyone can get cancer and everyone dies. Not to sound fatalistic, but it's true, right? Everyone dies. The important thing in the end is how much you enjoy this life of yours. And everything that I do is to enjoy my life. I don't live to avoid cancer. I live to enjoy my life and to make my body as healthy as I can. I don't stress about the small things because stress in itself puts a huge negative toll on your body. So what I think is most important is to take a moment each day to think of something that you're grateful for to find some piece of beauty in this world and to smile. That alone has a huge impact on the trajectory of your life. Leave me a comment down below if you have anything to add or any questions to ask of me. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for new videos every week with vegan recipes full of fiber and water and nutrients and antioxidants, vegan nutrition tips and inspiration. I'd love to hear what you think, so please uh, share in the comments down below. And if you're interested in joining me for a meal plan or a cleanse, you can find information about that at a link down below this video. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sharing. So often, my moment of gratitude for the day comes from reading a comment 
from someone who's watched a video and it's made a difference in their life. So thank you always for being there. And for those of you who are subscribed, we'll talk soon.